Today, I'm going to talk about the real reason why you are tired. And I have a lot of experience with this because I personally have been tired for years, probably decades before I figured this out. And so part of the body that generates energy is the mitochondria. Those are those little energy factories, which is also a fascinating topic in itself because these mitochondria have their own DNA, which is just fascinating. And the theory behind of how mitochondria evolved is basically this bacteria cell that uh, invaded our body and didn't get digested. It formed a symbiotic relationship with our own cells. And now we give it a home, we feed it, and it produces energy. And because there's a lot of similarities between uh, mitochondria and bacteria, and also another similarity between uh, bacteria and the chloroplast, the stuff that has the, the chlorophyll in plants that harvests the uh, sun's energy. It's kind of like the plant's mitochondria. So our energy is generated from the mitochondria. And there's a very, very common reason why the mitochondria might not produce the energy. I mean, even if you give it the right fuel, and that has everything to do with a very key nutrient called thymine or B1, which really is the spark plug of the mitochondria. B1 is the essential, very important uh, helper vitamin to help you convert fuel into energy, not just to feel energy, but to power all the different systems in the body. Now, I have a very good demo just to help you understand what B1 does, okay? Because in a car motor, you have to have uh, fuel and oxygen, right? But you also need a spark plug. If you don't have a spark plug, nothing's going to work. In this demonstration, I'm going to use a roadside flare, okay? And I'm going to blow gasoline on this flame, okay? As you can see right here, I blow gasoline onto the flame, and it will help the flame get brighter. And of course, I didn't use gasoline. I used uh, cornstarch, right? So don't try this at home. And basically, this represents B1 is the spark plug to allow this fuel to be burned. In this next part, I want to demonstrate what it would be like without B1, okay? You can see I have the fuel being blown on the flame, but basically nothing happens. In fact, it goes out, okay? That would be running your body without B1. Okay, so we have these mitochondria, right? And there's all these biochemical pathways that occur, and you need various things. You need fuel. And, and I'm talking about not just glucose or carbs. I'm talking about protein as well as fat, okay? So B1 is necessary to turn all three of those into energy and give you your metabolism to run the different systems of the body. Now, certain parts of the body uh, have higher amounts of mitochondria than others. Like, for example, your heart has the most mitochondria in the muscle. And so if you were to be deficient in B1, your heart would suffer. And so and then what's going to happen, you might have arrhythmias, you might have an increased pulse rate to compensate, you may have cardiac failure, you may have all these issues. And then we have the brain, which also uses a lot of mitochondria, certain parts of the brain, uh, anything that requires a lot of oxygen, okay, and fuel. So if you're deficient in B1, you're going to get brain fog, you're going to have problems with your mood, you're going to have a lot of neurological uh, agitation. And so you're going to feel um, stress more. You're going to feel nervous energy built up, especially because B1 really helps power the nervous system. And another big part of the nervous system is the autonomic nervous system. Okay. That includes both the flight or fight, which is the sympathetic part of the nervous system, as well as the parasympathetic, which has to do with rest and digest. So let's just talk about the parasympathetic first. You have something called um, sleep pressure. So it's an active thing that is pushing you into the deep sleep cycles, right? Well, that requires B1. Sleep is not a passive thing. It's an active thing where your body has to be put into so you can rest and repair. So B1 is very, very necessary to go through all the different sleep cycles. And if you don't have enough B1, you'll have all sorts of sleep problems from sleep apnea to a uh, getting up at two o'clock in the morning to nightmares, especially, to having vivid dreams, to just getting up and feeling crappy. Now let's talk about digestion. So if you don't have enough B1, you're not going to have the pumping action of the colon peristalsis, which relates to constipation. You can also increase your susceptibility of getting something called 
small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Now, as far as how B1 affects the sympathetic nervous system, this is really, really interesting because it will basically keep you in a flight or fight mode, okay? So it's going to be really hard to recover from uh, stress. And so a person that's deficient in B is going to be very reactive. They can get angry very easily. And B1 will just totally put the fire out and calm them down and give them a sense of relief. This also relates to tolerance to other types of stress, like cold intolerance. Now, this also relates in a recent video that I talked about taking cold showers. The people that can't tolerate a cold shower uh, are usually deficient in B1. And so they get into this cold and boy, they just, they just can't tolerate that. And the same goes with intolerance for heat. They can't tolerate being outside in high heats. They just, their body is just like shut down. So if you're deficient in B1, any little stress will affect the person a lot more. And so if you can't tolerate being stuck in traffic for like hours at a time, or maybe babysitting a lot of small kids, you know, at a daycare center, you may be deficient in B1. And that is my dry sense of humor. If you're deficient in B1, not only are you going to be tired, but there's going to be a lot of other problems that can occur, like your fluid backing up as edema. Uh, I already mentioned high pulse rate. Um, if it's very severe, you might have a condition called POTS. And without kind of getting into the details of what that is, it's a situation where you have a difficult time even standing up um, and you get dizzy and there's all sorts of problems. So POTS is a very severe B1 deficiency. So even like if you were to get up very quickly and feel dizzy, that is a classic inability to tolerate gravity stress. And that usually is a B1 deficiency. And especially going upstairs or up incline where your legs feel heavier, think B1 deficiency. Shortness of breath is another symptom. Hypersensitivity for certain odors might be a B1 deficiency. And anything related to recovery, okay? So let's say you exercise and you just can't recover, and you're an athlete and you have poor recovery, think B1. And the B1 deficiency can also express itself as many other conditions too, like peripheral neuropathy. If someone's a diabetic and they have numbness in the bottom of the feet or burning uh, sensation, that's a classic B deficiency because B1 also helps build the myelin sheath as well. That's a whole different function. B1 deficiencies can also be a huge dent into your immune system, okay? The mitochondria within the immune system can get damaged and so you have a poor immune system and especially recovery after an infection. If a person is B1 deficient, they're going to have a heck of a time recovering from uh, any virus as well as uh, certain vaccines that can damage the mitochondria. I put a link down below. But I can't really talk about it too much, but uh, you'll be able to read up on how a vaccine can deplete B1 and affect someone's mitochondria, and to give them all sorts of residual side effects that are related to the mitochondria. So those are some of the symptoms of a B1 deficiency, but I want to just touch on certain conditions that set a person up for needing more B1, okay? Now, the more carbohydrates and especially sugar that a person consumes, the more B1 that is needed. So they can't just get by on a little bit of B1. They need a lot of B1 to be able to compensate for the demand for B1. If you're on medications, the requirement for B1 goes way up, especially antidepressants, anti-anxiety medication, antibiotics, diuretics, metformin, and there's a lot of other medications. So let's say, for example, uh, you just don't have a lot of energy and you're eating good, but you're on a medication or maybe two or three or four or more, uh, and you have all sorts of other issues and doctor can't figure out what's going on. Well, you probably are just so depleted to B1 that nothing can work. So you're not going to feel good. And what they're going to do is start giving you more medications to fix this and that without understanding where it's really coming from. The more overweight you are, the more diabetes you have, the more uh, other health problems you have, chronic inflammation, the more B1 you're going to require. And also, if you have any infection whatsoever, the requirement for B1 goes way up as well. The more alcohol you drink, the more B1 you're going to need. Unfortunately, medical doctors you know, may check for a B1 deficiency if you have a late-stage alcoholic situation. But other than that, they don't usually look at B1. And if they do find a B1 deficiency, um, they'll look in the blood, 
but they're not really understanding the demand that is increased with all these other situations. So your demand is not just about hitting the, you know, bare bones RDAs. You need a lot more. The more insulin resistance you have, the more B1 you're going to need. And I'd say the majority of the population has insulin resistance. Now, people that have um, allergies or some type of sickness from mold or mildew uh, or some chronic, you know, infection with viruses, whatever, um, really need a lot of B1 because you have this revved up immune system that's constantly sucking up all the B1 that they have. People with uh, digestive problems need more B1 because uh, some of your microbes make B1 and then pathogens are going to compete for that last little bit of B1 that you have. And so leaving you high and dry. Now, I mentioned some conditions that deplete your B1, but there's also other things that can deplete your B1. Uh, the big one is uh, tea and coffee and red wine. So the more tea, coffee, red wine a person has, the less B1 they're going to have. Of course, the more sugar they have, refined sugar, the more B1 they're going to need. And so there are things that are like anti-thymine or anti-B1. Alcohol would be considered one. Metformin, which is for diabetes. Sulfites in wine, as well as in dried fruit, and as a preservative, can deplete your B1. Raw fish like sushi can actually deplete your B1 as well. Unripened fruit can create a B1 deficiency. Caffeine can create a deficiency. And stress also sucks the B1 out of your cells. And so does seed oils. Seed oils like the corn oil, soy oil, canola, uh, interfere with the enzymes to allow B1 to be transported. And so with me, the reason why I had such uh, fatigue for decades was because I was consuming the refined carbohydrates, not to mention alcohol, not to mention a ton of coffee, and just sucked all the B1 out of me. And I wish I would have known back then what I know now, because it's so simple once you understand the importance of thymine and also how thymine gets depleted. And by putting the B back in and correcting the underlying cause, you can get your energy back. Now, to be totally transparent, I do sell a natural B1 product, okay? But I don't recommend buying that product unless you fix the underlying cause. And I'm talking about your diet. I'm talking about some of these other things that we mentioned and start consuming food that's high in B1. So I'm going to give you a few things that have high levels of B1, okay? Number one, uh, animal meats. And the one that has the most, believe it or not, is pork. And if you're going to eat pork, I would recommend consuming a high quality, healthy type pork. Salmon and other fish have a good source of B1. Sunflower seeds has B1. Acorn squash, eggs have B1, and nutritional yeast has a good source of B1. Of course, if you're going to get nutritional yeast, I would recommend getting the source that is not fortified with the synthetic version of B1. And so anytime you take B1, don't go for the synthetic, go for the natural. Now, I did a very in-depth, um, I think, extremely interesting uh, presentation at one of my keto summits, okay? And I want to put that up right here because it totally covers everything you'd ever want to know and need to know about vitamin B1. Check it out. I put it right here.